Did you know that for every 10 people in this room, nine of you will have osteoarthritis by the age of 65? Last year, over 80,000 Canadians had their hip or knee joints replaced with an artificial joint. And the numbers will only continue to rise. You see, the patients who are getting artificial joints nowadays are younger, heavier, and more physically active than the previous generation of patients. So how will the total joint replacements of today be able to keep up with the patients of tomorrow? Now, most of my research looks at how we test new artificial joints before they're put onto the market. These tests are important because they help us determine how long an implant will last in the body. Now, since we can't test in human subjects, the machines that we use need to be able to reproduce the conditions in the human joint, such as the presence of synovial fluid. Now, synovial fluid is the body's natural joint lubricant. And like the motor oil in our car engines, it helps the parts of our joints move effortlessly together. But due to ethical concerns, we can't use synovial fluid in our tests. So the orthopedic industry developed a synthetic lubricant to mimic synovial fluid. Like synovial fluid, the synthetic lubricant is composed of mostly water and proteins. But how close is this to the real thing? To find out, I analyzed synovial fluid from patients with artificial joints. And I found that the composition of the synthetic lubricant was quite different from synovial fluid. You see, the proteins that are in the synthetic lubricant are less stable and more prone to degrade at high temperatures and friction produced during testing. These degraded proteins can significantly affect how the moving parts of an artificial joint interact with each other. And as you can imagine, this also affects the accuracy of our predictions. So with this information, I developed a new lubricant that is more similar in composition to synovial fluid. I then used certain additives to manipulate the stability of these proteins so that they would be less prone to degradation. To confirm this, I performed my own tests comparing the old synthetic lubricant to the new lubricant. And sure enough, the new lubricant produced almost no protein degradation. This new lubricant can improve how we test new artificial joints before they're put onto the market. Over the last five years, there have been three major recalls on artificial joints because they weren't tested properly and they failed prematurely in too many patients. These recalls cost billions of dollars and will continue to affect hundreds of thousands of lives. If we can improve how we test artificial joints before they're put on the market, then we can continue to create products for the future generations, better products that will last longer. Imagine the possibility of an artificial joint that will truly last a lifetime. Thank you.